I went to pick up Zachary from school and received a call from his dad, uh, Troy, who told me that there was something that happened to Zach during practice. I went to the field house and was immediately approached by a police officer and I knew there was something terribly wrong. I was at my daughter's freshman volleyball game. All of a sudden I looked down and she was out. She was laying on the ground. So we all ran to the court. We were lucky there was a doctor, two nurses, and off to the EMT there. When we got there, my husband felt her pulse and we couldn't feel anything. So they rolled her over and began CPR. Someone went and got the AED, which was applied. Shortly after that, the EMTs arrived. They also applied the AED. She was shocked five times before going to the hospital. She stayed in the cardiac ICU for eight days, where she was put in a medically induced coma. I went to pick Brock up from school about five o'clock, and he came to the car and got in and said, Dad, my heart's racing. And I reached over to his wrist to try to get the pulse, and I couldn't get it. And so I got his uh, pulse on his throat, and it had to be over 200, 250 beats a minute. Brock had previously, one other time, come home from football and told us that his heart was racing. We were practicing um, kickoff return, so my job was to block, and I had this really big dude that I had to block. So I go for it, I run up to him, try and block him, and he knocks me clean off my feet. So I hit the ground, and then my heart starts going. And it's not just going, it's, it's really going. And thankfully, practice was nearly over, so after maybe 20 minutes, my heart slowed down back to normal. So my dad gets here, I get into the car, and I tell him, hey, my heart's going again. You don't think, when you hear someone say, your heart's racing, you don't think 300 beats per minute. That's just not the norm. Uh, I called for medical help to get some information, and they told us to go to the emergency room, which we did. Uh, we spent four hours there that night, and they diagnosed Brock with WPW, which is Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. That's when they told us there were several options, but the best option was to, for him to have surgery. I had to give up football until heart surgery or else I could die. After genetic testing, we found out Callie had ARVD, arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia. I never thought this could happen to me. I was just an average 14-year-old girl on the volleyball team when all of this happened. I don't really remember anything, the game, the day of, or even the week before. I'd never had any symptoms. I felt a little tingly and tired after practice, but I figured that was normal. All that I know is that the AED did save my life, and now thanks to that I have my pacemaker as my safety net if anything ever happens again. Later we learned that Zachary had collapsed while he was running drills at the end of practice. Zachary was very strong and athletic. He um, was 6'2", 225 pounds. We always saw him as just a very competitive athlete. There were no warning signs and we had no idea that he would later be diagnosed with an enlarged heart and um, thickening of a node that, that caused his death. We would love your help to share our story about Zachary, Callie, and Brock. We are committed to raising awareness of undiagnosed heart conditions so this doesn't happen to you, someone in your family, a close friend, or a neighbor.